Hello everyone, today I'm going to create a Banitani art, a famous miniature Indian painting with watercolors. So when I'm working with watercolors, I have a different range of varieties which I use, which I work with. So one of them, the one which I commonly use are my watercolor tubes. Uh, these are a little bit thicker and they are a little bit, I need to dilute them with water whenever I work with them. So this is one variety. The colors are really vibrant and I have a set of like 18 colors here. Then I have these uh, watercolor cakes, same from Camel. And these are more, you know, um, convenient to work with. So then I have my metallic color here, uh, which I'll be using for making the jewelry. If you don't have these, that is fine because I'll be showing you how to work with just the regular watercolors that we have. So even if you don't have the metallic color, it is fine. But yes, I love to work with my metallic colors. They give a very beautiful shine and a texture to the painting. So these are my metallic colors. And I'm going to show you one more color cake palette which is from Bruce Rowe. I got it from uh, Amazon. These colors are also really bright and they come with so many shades. There are 42 shades in this palette. So I don't have to blend a lot of colors. I have almost all my colors ready. All the shades are available with me. So I don't mix a lot of my colors while I'm working with my watercolors. And then I have a wide variety of brushes that I use for my watercolors. Now uh, the watercolor brushes are different than uh, the one that you work with acrylics and other medium. So these are my uh, uh, natural hair brushes. They are soft. Their water absorbency is more than your regular synthetic brush brushes. So it is very good to work with your natural hair. So as you can see, the synthetic hair brushes are not that soft. They're a little bit hard as compared to the natural hair brushes. So you'll get almost no uh, marks on your painting when you work with them. Then I have these uh, synthetic flat brushes, which I use for my washers. So they are again very much helpful for creating the base and the texture of my watercolors. Also, I also work with the, some synthetic brushes also for making the fine lines and other detailing. So, yes, so these are my um, natural hair brushes, my washed brushes. Then uh, I'll show you my other brushes that I'll be using for uh, this particular painting here. So this is my most favorite brush. It's a synthetic brush. It is from Camel again. But I love to work with this brush. <laughs> and then I have one more. I'll be showing you that now. Okay, I can't find that now. <laughs> oh, here it is my beautiful red color brush. So this is again synthetic, but this has a very good absorbency. It can hold a lot of water for a longer time so that it gives me freedom to create long, smooth lines with that. All right. So moving on. Um, so this I have uh, already prepared a pencil sketch for my painting. And uh, the paper that I'm working on is a 300 GSM watercolor paper. It is cold pressed. I'm going to use a wash technique for this one. So here I'm just going to color plain colors for my painting. I'm not going to mix a lot of colors right now oh, on the paper because it is going to get a wash. So here we go. So I'm just going to start with my normal uh, tube colors, my um, uh, natural hair brush. I'll be using a little bit of water and I'm going to mix some colors for creating the skin color the base color for the body and uh, for that I'll be mixing white a little bit of crimson a little bit of orange so that is the combination that I'm going to work with for the skin color
so here we go I'm going to start coloring the face first with the skin color that we just prepared using our crimson white and orange I haven't applied any water on the paper first so just directly taking the color from my palette I have enough water in my brush for spreading the color I don't want to leave any white spaces while coloring adding color onto onto the paper
so now we'll be working with viridian hue and lemon yellow color and uh, we'll create the texture of the top starting with lemon yellow first we'll be mixing our viridian hue on the paper itself we're not using any palette here so it will go light to dark light shade will be on top and the dark shade will be at the base so same way you have to create a silhouette of the dress using these two colors you just directly mix on blend those two colors onto the paper use your brush take a good quantity of water so that it doesn't dry up fast so that you don't get any marks brush marks on the paper so here we go Now for creating the skirt of our beautiful lady, I am going to work with crimson and violet. So again we will do the same thing, we will be mixing these two colors onto the paper directly. So start with the crimson color first, use your brush which absorbs, which has a good water retention capacity so that the color doesn't dry very fast onto the paper right so work start working with your crimson color first so again we are going to give it an effect of these two colors of light and dark shade so uh, we are just adding this color at the top where the skirt is starting and somewhere under the dupatta like this and uh, now I'm going to switch. I'll wash my brush and then I'll take some beautiful violet color, blend it directly onto the paper, 
and just complete the whole dress likewise remember that this is just the base color that we are coloring right now and once it is done we're going to wash our painting and we color uh, over it as in we're going to give more detailing to our painting once we're done So once the dress is ready, we're going to take our burnt sienna color. That is the brown color and uh, that is going to be the color of the hairs. Again, we are not going to blend any color. We will just take pure burnt sienna color and we'll, we're just going to add it into the hair. And then that's all.
now for the jewelry and the border of the dupatta we are just going to use one single color which is very much similar to a yellow brown color also known as yellow ochre color so that is going to uh, be the color of the jewelry um, just to correlate it with the color of gold or the shine of the gold so we're going to take that bright yellowish brownish color for the bangles for the necklace for the border of the sari just plain color and then we'll add detailing to it So the first base color is ready. Now I'm going to allow it to dry. And um, once it dries completely, I'm going to give it a complete wash. That is going to be the first wash and then we'll move on to the next step. So this is how it looks once you have given it a complete wash. You can see the extra colors have been washed out and it just looks like a plain dull thing. But then uh, the wash is very much important because that is going to fix the color and you can work on top of it. So now you will see that how I'm going to start giving detailing to the skin color first. And uh, so yes, we work with the yellow ochre color and um, the skin color again, the same combination that we created. So first of all, you have to create the dark areas like the area under the eye, uh, the area between your eyebrows and the nose the eyelid the side of your face 
then half uh, part of the nose like you have to highlight the chin also so you just basically add the dark color on the curvy portion of the face right and then I'm using with my yellow ochre color for giving it the detailings creating a texture of an oval shape so this color is again used for highlighting the hair lines the eyebrow under the eye the eyelid and ears we often we miss the ear part because it is small there is a big piece of jewelry on top of it but yes it is an important thing so yes don't forget the ear see now I'm highlighting the area under the eye and the nose so right now also when the colors are not blended you will see a texture so once you're done adding all those colors what you need to do is you have to clean your brush take a little bit of water that is you just need a moist brush and you blend these colors on the face use the base color as the lightest color or the shininess on the face so we'll blend the colors but we will use the base color the one which we washed right so just keep it a good contour blend so you just keep on washing your brush whenever you feel that the brush has picked up a little more color the dark shade from the paper you just go wash your brush and start blending it again so now same way you will just highlight the dark areas as in uh, under the chin the neck for the face and same thing you're going to repeat for the hands also hands the stomach the neck that we see so yes so that is again going to be the second layer of colors again I'm repeating I'm working with my skin color the initial skin color that we prepared a little bit of yellow ochre color so be very attentive have a peaceful mind enjoy your art don't worry about it that you're going to spoil it this is after all your art so don't worry about getting anything spoiled watercolors you can repaint it that's the beauty so just continue working on the skin colors and just complete the hands and the stomach and everything So now our beautiful lady has thin fingers. So work carefully over there. You have to give it an outline with the yellow ochre color or you can also use a little bit of burnt sienna over there. Give an outline to each and every finger over there. Here I'm coloring the nails also with the same color. Right, so just outline them first. That is going to be the very first step when you start making the hand. Then you can use your brush for spreading the colors, creating the mehndi design kind of texture or highlighting the areas between the hands and the finger. So just again a lot of washing, a lot of blending you need to do. Don't forget you have the base skin color ready with you. So use that as we do in the class. And very carefully you're just going to highlight those all four fingers and one thumb so outline it and blend it a bit that's all if anything goes wrong use your water brush clean it and work again
so now for the rest of the hand just to show the curve or the cylindrical shape i am going to highlight the front area with white color so i'm just taking plain white color adding in it on top of the skin color that is going to lighten that area and then i'm going to clean my brush and just blend that white color with the edges the pencil marks right so you'll get a little bit of dark, light area over there and then again we're going to use the skin color and the brown color for highlighting it so we'll start by adding that dark color around it so this is the skin color first just going around it blending with the white see just blend it with the white keep on washing your brush and then take a dark color that is the yellow ochre color the yellow brown color that we worked with for making the jewelry and the sari border the dupatta border <laughs> that is going to highlight the hand so take a thin brush give it an outline and then blend it a bit We'll repeat the same kind of the steps for the second hand add the white color first highlight that area and then just contour it with your yellow ochre color and the skin color give a proper outline for all the fingers same thing do that yes yeah, so i'm starting with the fingers first
for the stomach the same thing white in the centers and yellow ochre on the sides and just blend 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 so you can see both the hands look so prominent now you can see the elbow you can see the fingers over there so same way you're going to highlight the stomach area so that it looks circular and it gets a proper shape this is the wonder of colors this is how you create a three-dimensional effect in your painting and here we go we're ready in just a second So as I also said previously that we are replacing the golden color here with our yellow ochre color, the yellow brown color. So the same color I'm going to work and highlight the uh, embroidery patterns on the blouse. So yellow ochre color and just gave the detailings over there and then we will work with the same viridian hue sap green and uh, uh, the color that we used was lemon yellow yes so again we're going to work with these three colors and we will highlight the um, folds of the fabric and other detailings over there
so here we go this is complete now in the very same fashion we are going to complete the skirt also so we are going to use the same base colors that is the crimson color rose pink and uh, violet color so starting with the crimson color i'm going to make plates on her pleats on her skirt <laughs> so use your brush the thin brush and we will just take a little bit of crimson color or rose pink color whichever you used over there for the skirt and we just make some lines as if those are the pleats on her dress Now once we are ready with the crimson color, those pleats, we are going to highlight each one of them and for that again I am going to take my violet color and we will work on each pleat. We will add that violet color on one side of the pleat so that it looks a little bit curved like here. So add that uh, violet color if you can you need to blend it with a, with a crimson color also but again if you are not able to blend it and if those lines are prominent that is fine because we're going to add more detailings to the dress in the next step so just add a little bit of violet color again wherever you have that pleat line and just give it a little highlight over there Now I'm taking more of violet color and less of water and we're going to make this area a little bit dark because the light is not over there. The fabric is not shining at that place. So adding a little darker color. I also added a little bit of blue color and that is indigo over there just to make that violet a little more bright and shiny. So if you don't have indigo color you can also add a little bit of um, cerulean blue that will also work
so the first layer of the dress is ready now and now I'm going to work on the hairs and now I'm going to work with some black color so black color is going on top of that brown area everywhere we're not going to blend it with the brown color it's just black because then we have to make a drape coming on top of the head which is the dupatta so we'll start with just plain black color for the hairs use less water over there because we want the area of the hairs to dry faster and that is how we'll get more time to start with the jewelry also with the same black color i'm going to make the eyebrow and uh, give a, a thin outline for the eye and we'll do that detailing over here so yes take some black color in your brush and here see we are done with the black color and now i'm going to work with the tip of my brush and oh i'm so sorry you're not able to see that but yes i'm creating the eyebrow i'm going to draw it as thin as possible I did not realize that my hand was blocking the face. Alright. So same way I am giving an outline to the eye right now. Also I am creating the eyeball with the same black color. So if you look at the hair closely, uh, because of the base brown color, the hair does not look like the darkest black color. You will get a hint of brown over there. So that was the basic intention to start with the brown color initially. So adding more detailing to the eye, creating the eyeball. It's just going to be plain black. So I'm just going to fill it with just plain black color with my brush. I'm not going to make a fine eyelashes for this eye because it's a very small eye and I don't want to have a thick outliner or for the eye so I'm just going to keep it simple just an outline with black color and a black eyeball so unless and until we create the lips the face will look incomplete <laughs> So, but yes, that is something which we are going to wait for. We will just create the highlighted nose area and then we'll work on the face. So, I'm not adding any color on the eye right now because I want that area to dry completely. And then I'm going to add a little bit of eyeshadow on, on top of her eye so that it looks highlighted and you get a good, good, good texture over there. So once the eye portion is all dried up and you don't have even 0.01% of the black color to spread, you will take your thin brush again. Now this time I have taken a little bit of crimson color in my brush which is going to be added as a line on top of the eye for making the eyelid which later on I'm going to fill all with crimson color and blend with the skin color so that it gives you a good effect of the fold on the eye. So as you can see now I have created the thin line. I am again sorry that my hand is blocking the picture while I am creating it. Right so just spread that line if you want you can add a tiny bit of crimson color. Now for highlighting the nose area, I am using a little bit of burnt sienna which is just brown color, reddish brown color. You also know this color by the name of Indian red color. So that is going for the jewelry, the head jewelry that she has on her forehead and a thin fine line for the nose and the nostril and the uh, little part above the lips. So just giving it a thin outline and then we are going to obviously blend that and highlight the nose also
So once you're ready with that line and a little bit of blending, I'm taking a little bit of crimson color here, which is going to work as a highlight for the hairs, the hairline, a little bit uh, for the nose and for the eyelid. And I have also created the earlobe with that. So just take a little bit of crimson color, add um, some few drops or make some lines over there. And then with a clean brush, little bit of moisture in your brush, you're just going to blend that color on that particular area. You can also add a little more highlight with some white color under the eyebrow or just the front part of the nose so that it looks bright and shiny. But that is optional if you want to make it. You can add the white color or you can just leave it like that. It looks complete. So once we are done with the blending of the nose, which uh, right now looks a little bit black, but I'll make it again once that area dries up. It turned out to be a little darker because of the burnt sienna color, but that's okay. I just added a little bit of white on top of the nose. I just blended it a little bit more and now I'll leave it to dry and then I'll work on it again. So now I'm going to take some crimson color for the lips. So it's just going to be plain crimson color over there. You can use a little bit of water for uh, making the crimson look a little bit lighter. But yes, it is just plain crimson color. Crimson like rose pink, if you call it that way. So once the lips are done, I'm just going to take my same brown color and give an outline for the complete face. Blend it a little over there for the highlight thing. So now highlighting the nails with the same crimson color, adding a little more detailing for the fingers over there. So see, she's having her finger on her chin. So we can just see that little tiny little nail over there. So that is what I just colored with my crimson color. Now I'm just adding more highlights for the top 
so this is black color I just created those lines over there and I'm using water in my brush for blending and again yes I'm going to work on the green color base that I we just created So once the top is also ready, we are going to give a little bit detailing for the jewelry now. So again, we are going to work with the yellow ochre color, light brown color. We are going to color the border of the dupatta also one time. And the same color we will use for filling in the jewelry, the base color for the jewelry.
also for the ornamentation as in for creating the design on the sleeves or in the jewelry like bangles like necklace and the earring i am going to use more colors other than yellow ochre which is going which are um red uh blue and a viridian hue that is the green color so these the three colors i'm going to work with and i'm going to see like right now i'm making a pattern on her blouse sleeve and same way we're going to highlight the jewelry so now again you can make your own designs and patterns on her dress and the jewelry so you don't have to follow exactly what i am making over here you can always always design the jewelry the way you want to do that so yes make it colorful make it more gold like so it looks beautiful once you're done with the jewelry so step by step slowly and steadily the painting will start getting a shape it will start looking complete so just go on be slow have faith in yourself you will be able to make it
so the, my secret ingredient over here is <laughs> is a whitener or a correction pen so i use that for creating those small beautiful white color pearls around the jewelry so yes that gives a highlight and it gives a very beautiful effect if you don't have this kind of pen correction pen that's fine you can always work with your watercolor just you have to take a little thicker color you can also use your poster white or you can always always work with your acrylics those are the thickest color and that is also going to give you the same kind of look so see i highlighted the um, a piece of jewelry on her head and same way i'm going to just highlight the rest of the jewelry wherever i want to draw some beads i'm going to work with that and uh, see now i'm working with my poster white for creating more beads so yes anything is good whichever works fine with you you can use that you can work with that the ultimate image needs to be beautiful that is all but yes the base medium for this painting is watercolor so that is what we are going to keep on working with we are not going to come in oil pastel here when i say that you can use any medium <laughs> okay So once we are done with all those uh, detailings for the jewelry, we are going to create the background for this painting and it is just easy. We are just going to take our thickest, biggest watercolor brush. We will take a lot of water in that. I am taking the base color as gray and then I am going to add a little bit of yellow ochre color on top of it for giving that rusty look. Now just finishing off uh, with my rest of the jewelry with my correction pen making all those beautiful white pearls and now using my indian red color that is the brown color and green color um, i just created the the beautiful branch of this tree with pink color flowers over here so this is how the basic picture looks like it needs a lot of work for this one now <laughs> So even if it looks complete, as you can see on the paper, the one thing which is missing is the dupatta. So we have to create a transparent effect over there. So for that here, I'm working with my gray color. And first of all, I'm just going to make the silhouette of the dupatta. Wherever you have a folded mm -hmm. mark or wherever you have the dupatta gathered, you're going to show that with the uh, lines, gray color lines over here. So first just add those lines wherever you feel that uh, the dupatta is folding or uh, you need to show that beautiful drape. So yes, uh, again, make those lines, take your 
brush which has good water retention because we don't want any cracked lines over here. I'm going to create some of these lines on top of her head also which is again blocked with my hand. I am again sorry for that. There you go. And then once we are done with the lines, we are just going to blend them a bit. Just a little bit with the base color. It could be the stomach that is the skin color or it could be the background gray and yellow ochre color. Or yes, it is going to be the head which is blackish brown color. So yes, so add more gray color over there and then see me blend it.
So now while blending, if you have the need of for using more color, you can always, always take more color over there. Just remember that whenever you take more color in your brush, it should go on the um, beginning of the line, right? So like for the dupatta, it should be near the border. For the area which is on her stomach, it should be around the, the area around the hands. So that is the point where we are starting showing the crease on the dupatta. So yes, you can always take more gray color for blending. Use water wisely over there. So now we don't want to pick up the black color from the sky. So keep on washing your brush while you're making this design or the pattern of the dupatta. More water, more water, more color. That's the mantra for this painting. Blend, blend, blend. So as you can see the painting is complete you can just leave it like that but I'm going to use my metallic colors here I'm going to highlight my jewelry and the sari border also the dupatta so yes I'm going to work with my um, metallic color if you have an option if you have such kind of colors with you you can always add them or otherwise also the painting looks complete uh, just plain watercolors Alright, so here I'm starting with my golden color. I'll highlight the jewelry. Yay! So I just added more detailing for the dupatta, like those little dots around over there. I'm just going to color the dupatta border again with my golden color so that, you know, when the light will fall on this painting, the metallic color will have their own shine. And that is going to look amazing for this work. Just play with your colors, whatever colors you want your ornaments to be, you can use them. So yes. Just make it look more beautiful.
so here i am going to use a little bit of silver color for highlighting the dupatta so as you can see on the head part uh, i don't see a lot of gray lines over there so i'm going to work with my um, silver color here if you don't have silver you can always add some white color pure white color over there it's also going to give you the same kind of effect minus the shine so yes uh, see so this is the way you're going to create some strokes on uh, the dupatta on her head so i'm using gray color so it looks like white only so you can always work with your white color if you don't have any silver color with you it is just going to give you the similar kind of effect so yes here yes it is almost done little more highlight for the dress so as you can see i have just added finished adding all those golden colors and the shades of all metallic colors for the jewelry and for the dupatta and it has given a different kind of glamour to this painting i'll say i always enjoy making these bunny tani paintings they are so beautiful they are so pretty and they are so indian that is the best part <laughs> okay so just keep on highlighting the way you want to the wherever you find that you need to make the highlight more or wherever you feel that the picture is looking flat you can work with the color theory with the light theory as in you can add the light and dark effect over there to highlight it so yes and then there is no end to adding detailing to a picture so the point is you need to be happy with your picture and when you find yourself happy with the picture it looks complete so just keep on adding color make more jewelry or give more highlights to the drawing just to complete it
so the final thing is just to remove the masking tape you get that beautiful border around the painting it the border is also important because whenever you get your painting framed so that border area is going to you know work as the ends of the painting and you don't have to spoil the paint painting and the border doesn't kill the essence of the picture it just stays around the border so yes the masking tape is important also while working with watercolors sometimes um, we add a lot of water we use a lot of water and the paper tends to curl up so this masking tape helps to keep the paper straight and on its place also so yes um it is very helpful i'm not saying that if you don't have any masking tape you won't be able to work with watercolors you can certainly work with it but then it is just as good as a helping tool so yes so it's okay if you don't have a masking tape you can still color you can still make it so whenever we learn to paint we never had masking tape we used to use a ruler for creating the borders and then we used to work on a painting so it's okay just go ahead make it so here is my masterpiece here is it all complete all beautiful or glammed up full of jewelry full of beauty i just loved creating it and i just hope that all of you watching this video try to make it with me it's okay if you go wrong somewhere it's just amazing to see all your works so just keep on making share your final work with me you can mail it to me you can comment down over here so here's the final piece i am so looking forward for all of you to create it and send it to me thank you so much for watching happy painting